Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I'm gonna bring you five Thanksgiving-themed tier tray ideas. I wasn't gonna really make any Thanksgiving DIYs, but I absolutely love tier trays, as you know, so I thought I would add some Thanksgiving ones. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, click the drop-down menu and click all so you're notified about all notifications. So today's video is actually part of a big playlist from Crafted by Corey's mini challenge and I'm going to talk more about that in just a little bit. Now it's time to jump into these DIYs. Now one thing about all of these DIYs today is that they are easy, quick and very affordable. So any skill level can make these DIYs. So the first thing I'm gonna start off with is this box sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use this scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm simply going to trace the box on to a corner of that scrapbook paper. Then I'm gonna cut it out using my little paper trimmer here. I actually found it and I was so excited to use it. So I, cause it just makes life so much easier when you cut straight lines. So I love this paper because it says things like cherry pie, pumpkin pie, apple crisp, like all Thanksgiving foods. And of course my favorite foods. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of play off of the food aspect for this this little DIY. So what I had to do was, I knew that piece of paper was gonna be too big to fit on the inside, so I'm just kinda testing it and trimming it down as I go. And for this, I'm just using my scissors, and then I'm kind of using my fingernail to make kind of a crease of where it stops, and then I'm going to, just like I said, just trim it down, test it, trim it down, and then finally stick it in there. So I did use a knife to cut it down. Do not do this because it actually just ripped the paper. So learn from me and do not do that. Just use the little creasing method with your fingernail and then just cut it off. So once I got it cut down to the right size, I was looking at it and noticed that, of course, in a couple of the corners, it's a little short. So what I ended up doing was painting the inside of my box with white Waverly chalk paint. Now, you don't have to paint the complete inside bottom, if that makes sense, because we're, of course, going to cover that with the paper. But I just decided to cover around the edges on the bottom and then, of course, on the sides. Now I did paint on the outer sides as well, that way all of the whites matched and it was all cohesive. After my paint was dry, I took some Mod Podge and put a nice layer at the in the bottom of my little box sign and then I went ahead and put my piece of paper on top. Now you wanna make sure that the corners are totally glued in so that way they don't flap up. And then just go ahead and use your hand and push it all down. Now you know I gotta distress this, so I'm gonna take my chunky brush and my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just gonna simply brush over the white frame around the paper. Now if you don't like the distressed or rustic look, you don't have to do this step. It's totally up to you and whatever you love. But I am gonna go around all of the sides just to kind of give it some dimension and some character, just a little something something. <laughs> if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love to distress things because my taste is definitely rustic for sure. <laughs> so then after I was done with the distressing, I went ahead and sanded it down so that way it all blended together. And I thought that this really like topped it off. It really made this sign look great, in my opinion. All right, next I'm gonna take this uh, wall or window decal sheet that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use that one that says get stuffed, but I'm actually not gonna take the decal off. I'm gonna cut around it. That way I it's a little firmer, so there's like a backing to it. So I am gonna cut that image out all the way around and I'm just cutting out the white part. And then one, a little of the corner actually flapped up a little bit, the, it kind of separated, so I did use some Mod Podge and just glued that down. And then of course the white was just a little too white and it really contrasted but not in a good way with my sign because the rest of it was rustic. So I did take some Waverly Antique Wax and brush over that as well. And I did make sure to pay attention to the edges 
of my little decal too. Again, if you don't like that rustic look and you just want it to be pure white, you can definitely keep it like that. This was just something I, I felt like it needed. After that, I had this little square. It's like a little wooden square, and it was left over from another DIY. So I'm just going to hot glue that to the middle of my scrapbook paper and then hot glue my decal onto the top, and that was it. That completed this fun little Thanksgiving sign. Now, you're going to have to wait to the very end to see the final reveal of my Thanksgiving tiered tray. All right, next DIY is so easy. So I took this gather together wood sign and I just want the gather from it. So I'm gonna use my knife to go ahead and just cut off the together and then the cornucopia. Now at first I do leave the cornucopia on there because I was gonna use it, but then I do end up cutting it off. So what I'm gonna do with my knife is kind of score it and then I can just easily use my scissors and, de and just cut it off from the sign. So real quick, I wanna welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope that you love what you see and choose to stick with me by subscribing to my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I hope you too also love what you see and subscribe, and I can't wait to show you even more festive DIYs coming up. All right, so after that, I did go ahead and sand it down, and now I'm gonna use my Dollar Tree spackle to fill in those holes. And then this is when I decided to go ahead and cut off that cornucopia. Now, I was actually gonna make a DIY with that cornucopia, but I messed it up, so I did not, and, and really messed it up. Nothing I could put in here, so it was, it was not savable. <laughs> so I went ahead and just cut it off. All right, next, I'm just gonna take a baby wipe, dip it in my Waverly Antique Wax, and just foam stain my word. Now, I did make sure to get all around the word on the edges, and of course the insides, all of the little nooks and crannies. Then once that dried, I took these two blocks that I had from like a brain teaser game or something from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna glue one on either side to make this a standing sign. Now I was gonna stop there, but then I kinda thought it was a little too dark, so what I decided to do was sand it down a little bit to lighten it up, and then I'm actually going to brush over it with my ivory chalk paint. And I'm only gonna put just a little bit of that chalk paint around it, and I am gonna pay attention to the edges because I just felt like this made it pop so I am gonna make sure that the edges are highlighted so I'm just gonna go through and brush that all over my word and then once that is done this is complete all right, so like I said, today I'm taking part in Crafted by Corey's mini challenge. Crafted by Corey is so talented. She's funny. She's cute. She is just so crafty and so fun. I want to thank her for hosting today's challenge. And in today's challenge, we were to make some tear tray ideas or minis for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or winter. So obviously today I chose to do Thanksgiving, but there's going to be a ton of crafters in the playlist below, and I will have the link. So be sure to jump around and watch all of the other videos, and also make sure to check out Crafted by Corey's YouTube channel. I will also have her link in my description box below. All right, now it's time for the second DIY. For this DIY, I'm gonna use this smaller little box sign, and the first thing I'm gonna do is pop off the little things on the inside, and then I'm gonna take my screwdriver and take off the hanger on the back. Originally, I was gonna use the inside of this sign, but then I decided to actually use the back of it. So what I'm gonna do is pop out the back of it, because I'm actually going to cover the back of that with this leaf scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna use that as a guide. I'm gonna trace it in one of the corners of that paper and then I'm gonna cut it out. Again, using my little little <laughs> paper cutter. In fact, I can leave a link in the description box below. I don't know if it'll be this exact one. I've had this for years, years and years and years from when I used to scrapbook. But I'm telling you, it makes life so much easier, especially if you can't cut very well like me. For some reason, I just can't cut. <laughs> so I just love using it. 
So then after I have my little square cut out, I'm gonna use my Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge that piece of paper onto this, uh, to this board. And you wanna make sure that you have a nice, even coat of Mod Podge. All right, so a little bit of the paper did hang over the side of that board. So what I'm gonna do is sand down the edges and then I'm going to just get, just that way so it gives it a nice clean cut. All right, so after I have the edges all sanded down, of course you know I'm gonna go through and I'm going to distress the edges. So I'm just gonna use this makeup sponge and just kind of dab, dab, dab all the way around the perimeter of my little board here. And then once I was done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue my board back into the frame. So I did. I was careful that when I pushed it down, the hot glue did not like squeeze out, but I just went ahead and pushed it down. All right, so next I'm gonna take this give thanks phrase, this like wooden word from a pack from the Dollar Tree, and again, I'm just gonna use a baby wipe and dip it in some Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm going to faux stain it. But you could probably actually skip this step because I ended up changing that, but just so you know, that's this is one option you could do. <laughs> and then I went ahead and lightened it up just a little bit by putting on some of that ivory chalk paint. Again, I ended up changing this, but I did wanted to leave this in here so you can, you know, again, have another option. Okay, then I'm going to simply hot glue this down in the middle of my board. Next, I'm going to take some twine and I'm going to wrap it from behind. I'm gonna hot glue it underneath, wrap it around mm, about three or four times at the top and then cut it off, hot glue it on the other end. And then I'm gonna do the same thing around the bottom. So I'm just going to um, hot glue it to the back on the inside and then wrap it around. <laughs> Basically just doing the same thing I did up top. Now when I wrap it around, I don't wrap it like in one straight line, I guess you would say, but I kind of made sure that they were overlapping, like the strings were overlapping each other. And then after that, I made a twine bow and I'm going to hot glue that to the top right corner right after the E on give right on top of the twine. So I just wrapped this around my finger, basically just did the two bunny ears, <laughs> tied it like shoelaces, and then hot glued it down and cut off the tails. All right, so when I put this on my tear tray, I actually kind of noticed that you can't really see the wording on there. So what I ended up doing was actually taking my pumpkin chalk paint from Waverly, and I just simply painted my words. And I thought that this helped so much because now it really popped from the leaf scrapbook paper behind it. And that was all I did to this sign, and after my, my paint was dry, this sign was done. Came out so fun. All right, so these next two are kind of like a two for one. So I'm gonna start off with this turkey little holder thing. I don't think anyone really knows what this is because it's not big enough to be a napkin holder, maybe like a pencil holder, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna use my knife to go ahead and cut off both of the turkeys. We are gonna be using both, but I'm gonna count these as one DIY, I guess. And all I did was just kind of slide my knife in between the turkey and that little stand, and then it just simply just popped right right off. And then I'm also going to cut off those two rectangular pieces because we're gonna be using those as well. And those just popped right off. I got a little splinter there, <laughs> but it's okay. And then I wanna sand everything down so that way I don't get another splinter <laughs> and make sure that it is nice and smooth. So I sanded down all of my pieces and also the bottom of the turkey was a little rough on both, so I went ahead and sanded those down too. And of course I have to use my little ladybug to clean up my sanding mess. <laughs> Okay, so next up I'm going to take my 
ivory chalk paint and I'm going to paint the solid turkey. So the one with no holes, I'm gonna paint that one in ivory chalk paint and I'm just gonna give it one good coat. I told you all of these DIYs are so easy. They literally took minutes to make and they're super affordable too. And they really don't use that many supplies. A lot of this stuff I had in my craft stash anyways. So I did forget to sand down the bottom of that turkey. So that's what I did just then. And then I'm just gonna finish uh, painting it over with my ivory chalk paint. And I'm only doing one side. You can do the other side if you want to, but I didn't feel it necessary. For me, just because I know where I'm gonna put this to your tray and you're not gonna be able to see the back. So then I'm gonna take one of those rectangular pieces that I also popped off of that holder, and I'm gonna paint one of those in the ivory chalk paint as well. We're actually gonna use this as a stand or a base for that turkey. Okay, once my turkey was dry, I'm gonna take my makeup sponge and I'm going to dip it in my Waverly Antique Wax and just dab, dab, dab all the way around my turkey. I really loved the effect that this gave. It kind of looked like rust a little bit, like that rust look. And this made, made my tear tray look so rustic, which you know that I absolutely love. But so you're going to kind of see like a theme here. I'm kind of going with like the stained woods, the naturals, of course the fall colors, but I didn't really have like anything in mind as far as like a theme except for Thanksgiving, but it all kind of just blended together. So I really loved it or not blended, but just went well together. So I went around the whole turkey and then I went around the base as well. And then I did decide to lightly go in the middle of the turkey too. I wanted just to add a little bit of texture to the turkey and of course to the base. And I'm just dabbing very, very lightly. All right, next I'm gonna put on a layer of Mod Podge and of course I put a ton on on accident. So I had to wipe some of it off. And then I'm gonna take this window decal off of this sheet and it says gobble gobble and I'm going to put that on my turkey. So I am gonna line it up. Now here's the thing, I do wish that I had cut off the gray little border around it, it cause it just kinda doesn't go, but I really wasn't thinking, I just went ahead and laid it on there. So then once it was posi positioned where I wanted it, I put some Mod Podge over that, and then I kinda camouflaged it in by putting some of that Waverly Antique Wax on top. So. Even though that gray border's on, I still really do love how this one turned out. I think that it looks so cool. All right, now uh, all I have to do is hot glue this to the base. And I did add some hot glue to the back and the front, and you do need to hold it there straight up for a little bit, That was so that way it wouldn't fall over. And that one's done. All right, so for the other turkey, I'm simply just going to stain this again by using my baby wipe and dipping it in some Waverly Antique Wax. And I am gonna stain all around the edges as well. And then of course, I'm gonna take that other rectangular piece and I'm gonna stain that too. Then I'm gonna go through and lighten it up a little bit by sanding around the edges. And then I decided to outline his eye in black I kind of regret that because now it looks like he has a black eye. <laughs> so I do end up changing it a little bit. But first, I took this little chalkboard tag that I got from Dollar Tree and spent my whole life trying to get that dang uh, clothespin off. Like the front of it popped right off, but this thing took forever. I tried heating it up with, you know, my hair dryer to melt the glue, popping it off. I used so many tools to try to get this thing off. So really just do your best to try to bry it off. I don't know, I can't give you any advice. I just used a bunch of different stuff, including that knife. Then finally I was able to pry it right off of there. After that, I took my white paint marker and I'm just gonna outline the eye again because that's when I decided I really didn't like the black. So then I'm going to outline just kind of like that natural wood around the chalkboard part, just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go all the way around. And I do still, I do keep having to like shake it and 
push it. If you know how to use a, if you know how paint pens work, you know you gotta like push it up and down to get the paint to come out. So that's what I'm doing there, in case you're wondering. <laughs> I'm like dab, dab, dabbing it. And I did go over the perimeter a few times, that way it was nice and white. Next I'm gonna take this skewer, and if you don't have a skewer, you just use a toothpick, but I cut off the end with the pointy part with my miter shears, and this worked, you're gonna see poop pops right off. And then I'm gonna just paint that with my white paint pen as well. Of course you can just paint it with regular paint, but I figured why get all my paint out <laughs> when I can just do this. So then once I had one half painted, I went ahead and glued the stick to the back with the pointy side down. And then once that dried, I was able to lift it up and paint the rest of that stick. So I made sure to go all the way around the stick to make sure it's fully covered. After that, it's time to hot glue it to the front of my turkey. So I did put some hot glue on it, but you're gonna see that it kind of wobbles a little bit, so I'm gonna fix that in one second. But first I'm gonna take this, this skinnier paint pen, and I'm gonna write out, eat chicken. <laughs> and I purposely spelled chicken wrong. I do actually know how to spell chicken, but you figure a turkey probably wouldn't know how to spell chicken right. So I, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to make it like he's the one that wrote this. So that's what I did. This is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it tells YouTube that you love what you see and you wanna see more, so smash that like button. All right, now we're gonna take care of the little wobbling sign. So I'm gonna use this 3D pop-up tape that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and I did actually have to double up on it because one was not thick enough. So you're gonna see that I actually take the sign off and then I'm going to add another layer of that to the one that's already down there and then I'm gonna add two more on the other side. And that really helped. And I noticed that I don't think hot glue and stain or like this Waverly Wax um, get along either. I don't think that hot glue actually stays on there. Uh, is it just me or have you noticed that too? Is that a common thing and I'm just now realizing that? But I'm, so that's why I'm glad that I used this, this tape here because it helped for the sign just to stay on in general. So then that had that evened out and balanced so that was better. Then I took that white paint marker and I'm just gonna go around the little feathers and all the way around my turkey. I just felt like it just needed something else. So I thought that this added the perfect touch. So I did go around the perimeter of the turkey and then I also went over the eye one more time just to kind of make it a little whiter. And then I went over the wattle <laughs> of my turkey as well, which that's what I believe that little hangy thing is called. <laughs> and then I went over the cutouts too. And then all I of course went over the um, stand the little base just add a little bit of highlighting to that and then all that was left to do was to hot glue this turkey to the stand and these little turkeys are finished again you want to hold it there so until the glue sets up but I thought these little turkeys came out so cute and funny all right for my last DIY of course when you think of Thanksgiving you think of pumpkin pie. So what I'm gonna do is I took this mason jar lid and I didn't have the bottom to it so I needed to create one. So I just traced it on a piece of foam board and you are gonna wanna cut two of those circles out. Now I did peel off the black part because I'm gonna paint it and I thought that it'd be easier to paint over white than it would be over black. So now I'm just kind of testing it, sticking it in there and then making cuts as needed so that way it completely fits. But like I said, you're gonna wanna cut two of those out because I noticed that one of them just did not make it high enough. So like in that little lid. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to cut my second one out. And then I'm just going to hot glue these two foam pieces together. So 
So I'm just gonna glue one on top of each other and then I'm going to paint my foam piece with some Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And I'm only going to do the top and a little bit around the edges. You don't have to do this entire thing or like a, around the whole edge if that makes sense, like the width of it. But I'm just gonna do the top and just a little bit down too on the sides. Then after that dry, I am going to take the bottom of a wide paintbrush, dip it in some, I think it's called mocha acrylic paint from Apple Barrel, and I'm just gonna make dabs all the way around. Now, these are like half circles, well, a little bit more than half circles, but I'm gonna go all the way around to create the crust of my pie. Okay, so I wanna know down below, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dessert? Obviously, mine is definitely pumpkin pie, but a close second is going to be apple crisp. I love apple crisp. But then again, I also like cherry pie too. Ooh, that's a hard question. <laughs> All right, so then I wanted to make the crust look a little burnt, <laughs> like I made it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't bake. Um, and so I'm just going to go around the perimeter of the crust with some Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just gonna darken it up, and then I am gonna go in the middle of the pie, too. Now, the thing that I loved about using the foam board is that it actually gives the texture of pie, like when you look real close. So I thought that that was kinda neat. Okay, now I'm just gonna simply hot glue my foam piece into the mason jar lid, and now it looks like the, pump, the pumpkin pie is in like one of those foil pans. Last step is I'm gonna take this spackling, and I'm gonna put a little dollop of spackling or I'm sorry, it's caulk, caulk right in the middle to kind of look like whipped cream. And then I'm also going to hot glue a tumbling tower block on the back so that way it stands. And that completed this little pumpkin pie and our last DIY. So now it's time for the final reveal. What do you think? I have to say that all of these DIYs have me craving stuffing, mashed potato, turkey, pumpkin pie, and I cannot wait to put my fat pants on this year and eat some Thanksgiving food. Do you love Thanksgiving food? Do you not love Thanksgiving food? Who doesn't love Thanksgiving? But I loved how all these DIYs came out. I think my favorite is probably that get stuffed or that turkey that said gobble gobble. I thought that was funny. You're gonna have to let me know down in the comments which one of these DIYs was your favorite or do you like, what do you think altogether of, of my tiered tray? What do you think of the whole look? You can see that I added some flowers, pumpkins, some big leaves to complete the whole design. So definitely let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you got some great ideas and were inspired to come up with your own decor for Thanksgiving this year. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit that like button, and share this video with your friends. And until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!